Hello. Well, today I'm going to talk about a film that is 15 years old and uh, is, uh, is one that I've enjoyed ever since I saw it. Um, and uh, It's inspired by true story, true events, what have you, whatever you want to say. And that film is Zodiac, um, directed by David Fincher and starring Jake Gyllenhaal, Mark Ruffalo and Robert Downey Jr. Um, of course, the this DVD I've got is like the like letters that the Zodiac sent to the um, you know the press and also uh, the police. Um, this film, you know, it's based on a book by Robert Gray Smith, who Jake Gyllenhaal plays. Um, and, you know, it goes through the case of the Zodiac, and, you know, it begins with the second tax, the confirmed ones, where the third victim, you know, was, who passes away, and there's a, the guy there, he lives, which is a pattern for a while. Next time there's a Zodiac goes and attacks people, like, the, the woman, like, again dies, and the male lives. And then his last confirmed killing is uh, uh, of a cab driver. And, uh, you know, there's uh, kids who notice something from outside and then hear a gunshot. Um, but they noticed something going on in a cab and thought the cab driver was being robbed. Um, because the guy was out and he was about... You know, the passengers, he's doing something, which we later then fi uh, find out that uh, what he was doing was cutting off a piece of the tax driver's, uh, cab driver's bloody sh uh, shirt, uh, just for evidence that he was the guy who did it, and he, of course, with, along with uh, his letters and also ciphers, um, that he... And, and uh, as of now, two have actually been solved. Um, the first one was solved not too long after it uh, was, uh, you know, released um, to the public. Um, the second, um, it was 2020, and it was used by something with computers and how all of that happened. And um, it's quite interesting, and there's a way that you can find it on YouTube of how people were able to figure it out and um, you know it was confirmed to be authentic by the FBI um, and uh, in it there's something that which in the film is recreated which is there's somebody who called themselves a Zodiac and he wanted to call in on a, on a morning show and um, when that happens um, the guy is going on and talking, and now, you know, he doesn't want to go to the gas chamber for the letter. Uh, he, the Zodiac actually confirms, though, of course, it was already confirmed that it wasn't the Zodiac, because the guy who they traced the call it was a mental uh, institution. So, um, but the in the letter, or in the cipher, it reads how, you know, he is not afraid of the gas chamber and for him it would be great because as he alerted, alluded to in the first cipher that was cracked you know he um, it will get him closer to paradise because in his mind or at least that's what he at least wants people to think when he dies he's gonna go to in the afterlife he's gonna have slaves you know and the slaves are who he's killed and he has definitely killed five people the first two uh, people he killed, that's not in the film because nobody was there to survive or witnessed uh, this going on. Um, and there's also in the film somebody who they say was abducted by him and they escaped with her baby and she was pregnant and, uh, you know... It, 
possible that she was uh, abducted by the Zodiac, though we don't know for sure. Um, though there's stuff out there that, uh, where she's said how, like, how apparently her statement, you know, like, the police are supposed to, like, write down notes and for them to prepare their, you know, for their report on, on stuff when they're talking to people, like, interviewing them. Um, apparently he, the cop that she was talking to wasn't really writing things down, um, like he was here and there, but not, like, consistently, and so it could, it could be also, like, whatever the report was, wasn't completely accurate, because the guy didn't constantly write things down, but, um, that's just one thing, um, to keep in mind, but then, of course, you know, who knows? Uh, of course, as time goes on, and people retell th their stories of what happened. Certain details are uh, missing uh, because you know, again, enough time goes on. You know, even for something that was very traumatizing and something they wouldn't forget, there could always be little details that could be important that are just forgotten or just aren't mentioned because they weren't thought of at the time. Uh, Zodiac, you know, and, you know, Robert Graysmith, you know, we follow him quite a bit throughout the film, and he, uh, gets so obsessed with this that he, you know, wants to try and figure out who it is, and, you know, Arthur Lee Allen is the main suspect, um, but, you know, DNA, handwriting, all these things do not match him, and also, any evidence that really exists um, that could point to Arthur Lee Allen is all circumstantial, which you can't use in order to actually convict anybody. You need actual real evidence, proof, of course. And so, really, for the very, some of the suspects, you know, we hear like you know Rick Marshall for one, and there's some others. We don't really uh, know. We don't really. Yeah, they key on some people here and there, but, um, you know, and I, and I actually read the book, too, of this, um, and it's, uh, it's a pretty good read, though, uh, you know, I'm somebody who really enjoys, like, true crime stuff, and so I, ever since I was a kid, I think, and I think that's also part of the reason why, um, like, horror movies don't really scare me much. You know, I mean, of course, you know, there might be a little jump scares, of course, but, you know, that might be a little startling, and like, oh, that happened. You know, it's not really terrifying, at, you know, to the point where it's going to keep me up at night. You know, horror movies have never actually done that, but true crime uh, shows and stuff like, you know, movies like this, you know, stuff like th this could actually, you know, actually freak me out because, of course, this actually happened, and, you know, in real life is scarier than any movie, and honestly, within the first hour, we see all the killings that the Zodiac does, and the abduction of that woman, or he's taking a ride after he, you know, loosened her, um, uh, wheel, which then fell off, and Offers her a ride, which then, she, of course, she gets out, and then, yeah. B basically, you know, um, you know, we we don't totally know who the Zodiac is, which I, I think also makes it even more scary. You know, this actually happened. We do not have an actual face and name, but there's sketches of the guy, because you know, after he killed the taxi driver. Um, Two officers, you know, were walking, or were driving by, and the guy was walking, like, lumbering casually. Looked at him, talked a bit, and they drove away, because they asked if they saw some, if he saw someone, and he said, yeah, there's a man waving a gun around, and he went that way. So they went that way, and he continued walking, and went off into a park, and disappeared, and which he alludes to in the letter, and how, uh, he, um, <clears throat> which I, 
which is the famous sketch of him with the crew cutting glasses. And, uh, you know, it's at that point, though, the reason he wasn't, you know, arrested or anything was because something happened over dispatch and they said a black male is the person, even though that wasn't said by the kids who called the police, but somehow translation that came out, but then was corrected, but by the time it was corrected, he was already gone, so, you know, they couldn't just go back and find me in the area that they saw the guy, and then, you know, he was already gone, so, um, and, uh, you know, in the second, heck, or third, chronologically, the second of the film, yeah, he wears this execution, just about like a hood, and, uh, this black outfit with the cross symbol of the Zodiac, and he was pointing the gun at him, and then he has them tied up after, you know, he gets the woman to tie the guy up, and then he ties the woman up, and tightens the man's, uh, hands and feet together and everything, and, uh, after that's done, he, the guy, uh, he stabs them. And, uh, one reason the man lived is because he was stationary. And, uh, the woman sees this going on, and then she, you know, uh, is trying to get away, and then she, which causes him to stab her more because she's not stationary, like him. And he plays dead, and, uh, after a while the guy leaves writes on his car the dates of his previous uh, murders, and then he writes the last one. This is September 1969, uh, by knife. And uh, he also calls the police at the beginning of the, after the 4th of July <clears throat> uh, attack. He calls the police, tells them, you know, there's two shot with a 9mm Luger, and uh, I also killed those kids last year, goodbye, and he hangs up, and he calls also afterwards of the stabbing, and he says, I want to report a murder, no, a double murder, he go, he tells them where, you know, they are, and he goes like, I'm the one who did it. Let's go the phone and heads off. And stuff like that is really creepy and frightening. Um, I will say I understand why the first two people the Zodiac killed, you know, the kids, teenagers, he didn't, they didn't show that because, again, they, you know, neither of them lived. And there really wasn't any witnesses. They heard, people said they heard something, and then they saw some car go by. But you know that wasn't really. That was really it. They didn't see who it was in there. If it was somebody who was a stranger, so they couldn't. Of course, it was also dark. Um, but yeah, and one thing this film does is it obscures who is playing the Zodiac. You know, because the Zodiac, depending on who it was, reporting on. Who it was, it, it was kind of different. It seemed to have a different, even though the crew cut and like glasses and such seemed to be the thing that was fairly consistent. Still, like the weight, sometimes he was seemed to be a bit heavier, sometimes he seemed to be lighter. Um, but uh, you know, as time goes on, uh, as the film goes on, you know. And, Talking about, uh, you know, Arthur Lee Allen, you know, it seems to really want the people to be like, you know, this is the Zodiac, he, he did it. Um, but because of just circumstantial evidence and no such physical evidence exists to truly link him to the murderers, I don't know. And I've, I've looked at some of the various suspects because I think of all the cases like that are like this, I think this is the one that really fascinates me the most. 
course, there's also like Jack the Ripper and uh, Tex Arcana murderer, you know, the Phantom Killer. You know, people, uh, stuff like that is always fascinating to me. Um, and um, considering we were able to, not too long ago, be able to find out what the uh, one cipher said, who knows, maybe we'll figure out what the rest of the ciphers are and we'll maybe the identity will be um, solved somehow from those but even then you know uh, people sometimes are able to see the name of a particular suspect that they or a person of interest that they think is the guy who did it um, and I don't particularly have anyone that's my favorite. Um, <clears throat> I don't know if I really think if Arthur Lee Allen really did it because, again, it's just circumstantial evidence. Also, he was bald, but, you know, and also he couldn't have worn the sort of boots and stuff that there were some boot prints. Like, he couldn't wear that kind of <clears throat> shoe, you know, that kind of boot because uh, he had gout, so he would wear sneakers. Um, and also he was bald you know, on top <clears throat> and he had a crew cut so I mean I guess some say well he wore a wig or he you know cut the soles off of certain shoes and then glued them onto the sneakers and so, you know, it, it's things like that though that's like at that point you kind of have to invent how this was done to fit your suspect or the person of interest um now, is it possible that Arthur Lee Allen was the Zodiac? Of course. But since there's no not been any physical evidence in DNA, handwriting, and no real evidence has ever been concrete enough to tie him to being the Zodiac, being at any of the crimes that are confirmed, and even some that are prior and after, that people sort of suspect he might have done or had some, you know, we, we just don't know for sure. Um, but yeah, um, <clears throat> the film kind of points to uh, that direction of it's Arthur Lee Allen. I'm not so sure. Uh, again, I don't, uh, I'm not going to say it could never have been him, but considering there's no such true evidence has ever been brought forward that could never be disputed that this was him um, until that day comes which interestingly enough it you know he died in like 92 or so and um, 91 92 and um, in that time nothing has ever come up even prior you know in 68 69 when these murders happened no real evidence happened uh, came forward um, the guy who accused him of being the Zodiac, um, Don Cheney. You know, uh, he seemed to have a grudge against him because, you know, he was a child molester. You know, he touched kids. And he was actually in jail and here and there. Um, and lost his job as a teacher because of it. And, um... But, you know, it, when you really think about it, it's like it seems like the guy had a grudge against Arthur Lee Allen because he uh, like he touched one of his like daughters or kids and so he was not happy with that and so said this stuff and so I've talked about why he did it and it seems like he was just wanted some sort of revenge over him because of that and so basically wanted to ruin his life and um because the guy had guns, he had, I guess was weird and would mis purposely uh, misspell uh, uh, certain words um, just because, like, such as here, special features. Um, you know, so they, uh, yeah, this is a. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's just sometimes you gotta look at certain people's claims and see why they 
think so and so did it and if there's any credible evidence or anything to support what they're saying or if it's something personal and so they have something against them which seemed to be the case for that and um and i know i, I know i didn't really talk too much about the uh, other people like robert graysmith david toski who um was the inspiration for dirty harry um and also is the person who steve mcqueen modeled for bullet even wore the gun gun muscle in the way he did Paul Avery was Robert Downey Jr. You know, and we see in the film he um, gets really addicted to drugs and like an alcoholic and stuff. Apparently that didn't really happen. Um, or if it did, it was very exaggerated for the film. Um, but in terms of the case and the actual murders and the crimes and such, what we see, that seems to be very authentic and real. As well as the investigation with Bill Armstrong um, and Dave Tosky. Armstrong is played by uh, Anthony Edwards. And Elias Cotis is in the film also uh, um, as an officer in Vallejo. Uh, Brian Cox plays Melvin Belli, who is a lawyer and who was on the TV show, which the Zodiac. Uh, called into David Carroll Lynch uh, was Phil Allen and if you've ever seen Fargo you know him as Norm Burge's wife um, but everybody does a great job the acting is incredible the uh, writing is excellent you know, dialogue really good um, the direction is fantastic um, this is actually my favorite David Fincher movie um, I think that uh, in terms of awards, this film really got uh, kind of got screwed over. It got nothing like at the Academy Awards. You know, it wasn't nominated. I think it easily could have been, but I guess you know, with films like um, There Will Be Blood and uh, No Country for Old Men and uh, Michael Clayton and so many other films, I guess it's kind of understandable this film didn't really get much awards attention but you know, I would have thought like the performances of like you know like Robert Downey Jr. at least would have been worthy of a best supporting actor nomination but what do I know um yeah this film is really good um if you haven't seen it I think it's worth watching um of course this is the director's cut so it's a uh, two hours and 42 minutes. I have the uh, R-rated version, the, or the theatrical version. This is rated R, too, which is interesting. Director's cuts typically aren't rated R, but sometimes they are. Not sure why, but okay. And, uh, <clears throat> but, you know, this film is really good. Um, even though I'm not in total agreeance with the uh, with how um, you know you know the, the conclusion of it being Arthur Lee Allen, it's still really well done, and also it you know you were able to see uh, Robert Graysmith so obsessed with this case, and um, how he goes from being a cartoonist at the San Francisco Chronicle to being full blown obsessed and writing a book about it. And, uh, it is quite interesting to say the least. So that's really all I have uh, to say today. I hope all of you are doing well, having a great day and a great week. Um, I really love this film. I could continue to talk so much about it, but, um, and also the case, it's very interesting, I think. Um, so many suspects, you know, and I don't really have a particular favorite, which may be a good thing, because um, I'm not able to try and piece together this, that, and whatever just to fit whoever it is that I happen to think is likely to be the Zodiac. But, yeah, 
Hope everybody has a great day. Hope you have a great weekend and a great week. And we'll see you all next time.